Bethel. I'm a sophomore, and today I'm going to talk about how learning differently doesn't mean you aren't smart. Uh, for myself, this is something I struggled with a lot um, in my education and getting to where I am now, and I've had to over, uh, overcome some obstacles, but along the way, I've learned some things I'd like to share with you all. I would compare a lot of school systems and the approach they take as a cookie cutter. Um, they try to take kids and mold them into the ideal student. And when you do that, you leave all this extra dough. So we have these gingerbread men. They're fine, but then you have this extra dough that you know, didn't quite fit the mold. It's not going to make it, so it's just going to go to waste. I myself have a learning disability. Um, to have a learning disability means it's a neurological processing problem. Most common forms, dyslexia, dysgraphia, and uh, auditory processing disorders. Learning disability is the highest rate of disability in students ages 3 to 21. Um, it's all across the board and it really goes unnoticed by our school system. One in five children struggle with a learning disability. Children with learning disabilities are three times more likely to drop out than the average student. Only one in 16 schools have programs set up for these students and only one in 50 receives funding for such programs. I have dyslexia. For me, it's mainly around math, short-term memory. So that means I could come in, uh, work with a teacher for an hour, I understand the concepts, they leave, come back four hours later, it's gone. And I've had problems where teachers think, you know, I'm just not willing to learn the information, or, you know, it frustrates them, but it frustrates me too. I want to learn the information. I'm trying, and it's not because I'm not paying attention, it's just how I process. So for me, it takes a lot of repetition to get something to stick in my head. My journey, um, I started by going to a prestigious school for all boys. On their website, it says molding boys into men, so that fits that cookie cutter mold. They're trying to take a child and over the course of the time with them, put them into what they think an ideal student looks like. Um, Fourth grade came around, they approached my parents, they said, you know, BK's going to have to redo the fourth grade, he's not going to pass. Uh, they kind of process that, processed that for a little bit. About a week later, my mom came home, 8 o'clock at night, I'm crying at the dinner table trying to do homework, and it's like vocabulary word search. Uh, I've been trying to do it for like two or three hours, that's not really something a fourth grade student should have to deal with. And she said, that's it, um, you know. I don't know what we're going to do, but this isn't it. So they pulled me out. They homeschooled me for the second half of the year. I went and took the test to pass fourth grade. I passed with flying colors. So it wasn't so much that I wasn't capable of doing the work. It was probably just the approach that they were trying to have me do it. Uh, for the sixth grade, I went to the new community school. It's a very small school focused on children with dyslexia and learning disabilities. Uh, my father actually went there and graduated from there and it changed my life completely. Uh, small class sizes, I mean, I had a math class where it was me and three other students. So it was almost like having a tutoring session for an hour long. That's what I needed, and it really helped me see how I learn, the strategies I need to learn and retain information, and I think it completely changed my life. Uh, for high school, I went to the, stu uh, the steward school. Um, small class sizes, but I was able to compete competitively in athletics, which for me, baseball is a big part of my life. So that was the next step that I chose to take. Uh, similar to Averett, 20 kids in the classroom. I was getting more of the social aspect that my previous school lacked, but I was still getting the one-on-one -on -one I needed with teachers. So that's why I chose Averett University. Um, small class sizes, I'm still able to play baseball on a competitive level, and I knew that if I wanted to be successful in college and set myself up for success, I would need that one-on-one -on -one with my teachers, and I was very lucky to find a place like Averitt where I could get that. So I would say for a school system, the focus should be on the individual. Um, not every student's the same. You know, We all learn differently, and to be able to learn our own way, we need that time with a teacher one-on-one. -on -one. So we should prioritize the students try to get as many teachers into the work field as possible so there's a lower student-teacher ratio 
and just smaller class sizes all around. And I believe if we do that, we'll mold the individual into who they are instead of trying to fit them through a cookie cutter, and that gives you an individual product like this. Thank you.